Good evening. You're watching the news tonight, your daily roundup of all that has happened across India and the world. I'm Sean Russell and these are the headlines that we're tracking this evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi replies to motion of thanks and President's address in Rajya Sabha, targets the Congress while listing out his government's achievements. Embarrassment for government in the Rajya Sabha, opposition adopts amendment against making educational qualification mandatory for contesting panchayat elections. Art of Living Foundation event gets National Green Tribunal clearance in Delhi, but told to pay a fine of 5 crore rupees for holding the three-day function in the national capital. Government informs Supreme Court that liquor industrialist Vijay Malia has left the country, holds hearing on petition files by Banks Consortium. And tensions increase in the Korean Peninsula. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un claims his nation has miniature nuclear warheads that can fit on ballistic missiles. Our top story this evening, Prime Minister Narendra Modi today dismissed the opposition's allegations in the upper house while listing out his government's achievements. He also lauded them for contributing to the smooth functioning of parliament. Safar mein dhup to hogi, jo chal sako to chalo, sabhi hai bheed mein, tum bhi nikal sako to chalo. Kisi ke vaaste, किसी के वास्ते राहें कहां बदलती है किसी के वास्ते राहें कहां बदलती है तुम अपने आप को खुद ही बदल सको तो चलो Quoting Urdu poet Nida Fazli's couplet at the end of his speech in the Rajya Sabha, Prime Minister Narendra Modi took a dig at the Congress and the opposition. It was just one of the many such sarcastic references he made during his hour-long reply to the motion of thanks on the President's address. Congress <laughs> is कितनी मेहनत की साहब सत्ता में इतनी मेहनत की होती तो जनधन अकाउंट का काम मुझे करना ही नहीं पड़ता The Prime Minister listed out his government's achievements in several sectors saying his government's priority is good governance He also said his focus was on putting stall projects back on track मैंने पिछले दिनों करीब 300 प्रोजेक्ट का खुद ने रिव्यू किया और उसकी वर्थ है करीब 15 लाख करोड़ रुपया मैं इस सदन को नम्रता पूर्वक कहता हूं कि वो सारे छोटे-छोटे छोटे संकटों में फंसे हुए ये 15 15 20 साल पुराने स्टॉल प्रोजेक्ट्स आज चालू हो गए हैं गति बढ़ रही है परिणाम the Prime Minister also appreciated the opposition's contribution for the smooth functioning of parliament while seeking its renewed cooperation in passing important bills मैं आग्रह पूर्वक प्रार्थना करता हूं सभी मान्य सदस्यों से कि लोकसभा में जो बिल पारित हुए हैं उनको हो सके उतना जल्दी पारित करके हम देश को गति देने में अपनी भूमिका अदा करें The Prime Minister also reiterated the government's commitment to the welfare of farmers through several steps taken by his government Vishal Dayas report for Rajya Sabha TV and the motion of thanks to the President's address was adopted by the Upper House today with an amendment moved by Leader of Opposition Ghulam Nabi Azad. The Prime Minister had during his reply urged members not to press their amendments. However, Ghulam Nabi Azad pressed his amendment causing embarrassment to the government for the second year in a row. I that we समय की सीमा में जितने विषय आ सके आ सके नहीं आए उसका मतलब ये नहीं वो महत्व के नहीं है और इसलिए राष्ट्रपति पद की गरिमा और उनके विजन पर भरोसा करते हुए मैं सभी आदरणीय सदस्यों से प्रार्थना करूंगा कि वे अपने संशोधन को वापस करके राष्ट्रपति जी के अभिभाषण को सर्वसम्मति से धन्यवाद प्रस्ताव हम पारित करें तो एक अच्छी परंपरा जारी रहे
Prime Minister Narendra Modi made this appeal at the beginning of his address to the discussion on motion of thanks for President's address. However, leader of opposition Ghulam Nabi Azad pressed his amendment seeking to mention regret in the motion on the issue of educational qualification being made the grounds for contesting panchayat elections in Rajasthan and Haryana. लेकर राष्ट्रपति तक एमपी एमएलए के लिए कोई एजुकेशनल क्वालिफिकेशन निर्धारित नहीं की गई है और जब बीजेपी की राजस्थान की गवर्नमेंट ने और हरियाणा की बीजेपी गवर्नमेंट ने ऑर्डिनेंस इशू किया और पंच और सरपंच के लिए एजुकेशन निर्धारित की आठवीं क्लास और दसवीं क्लास जिसके चलते सबसे ज्यादा जो नुकसान हुआ वो हमारी बहनों का हुआ लीडर ऑफ द हाउस अरुण जेटली ऑब्जेक्टेड टू द एडमेंडमेंट सेइंग इट कैन नॉट बी टेकन अप इन द हाउस एज इट इज अबाउट अ सब्जेक्ट इन द स्टेट लिस्ट दिस हाउस कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली हैज नो जुरिस्डिक्शन टू पास अ रेजोल्यूशन ऑन एनी लॉ व्हिच इज स्क्वायरली विद इन द डोमेन ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एंड देयरफॉर दिस मोशन कैन नॉट बी After hearing arguments from both sides, Deputy Chairman gave a ruling permitting the amendment to be moved. Now, prima facie, there is no mention of any state or any state legislature. Any state legislature. This is a concern of the member who moved the motion. You see, if there was a direct mention of any legislature, then okay, we could have considered it in a in a. in a different way it is only a concern of a member of a member that that no please concern of a member that certain things are not added into this the government made one more attempt to persuade the leader of opposition but with azad not relenting the amendment was put to vote and the opposition prevailed with a comfortable margin result subject to correction ayes 94 no 61 The amendment amendment number three four of five is adopted. Yeah. The upper house then adopted the motion of thanks for president's address with an amendment. That the members of Rajya Sabha assembled in this session are deeply grateful to the president for the address which he has been pleased to deliver to both houses of parliament assembled together on February 23, 2016. But regret that the address. which also forms part of the basic structure of the constitution and is consistent with the spirit of 73rd amendment to the constitution intended to expand and encourage democratic participation of the poor and marginalized without imposing educational or any limitation on the right to contest elections those in favor please say aye, aye. those against please say no i think the i saw with the i saw with the i saw with the motion is adopted vishal day has report for rajya sabha tv The National Green Tribunal has fined Sri Sri Ravi Shankar's Art of Living Foundation 5 crore rupees for organizing the World Culture Festival on the Yamuna flood plains. The tribunal also slammed the authorities for allowing the event to take place on the ecologically sensitive banks of the river. The 3-day event will begin this Friday. The Art of Living Foundation's World Culture Festival will go ahead as planned. The National Green Tribunal has however slapped a fine of 5 crore rupees on AOL. The Art of Living Foundation will pay this amount as environment compensation before the festival is to begin. The tribunal has also fined 5 lakh rupees on DDA and rupees 1 lakh on the Delhi Pollution Control Committee for not discharging their statutory functions. एक्सपर्ट कमेटी को चार हफ्ते का समय दिया गया है कि उस चार हफ्ते में वो ये डिटरमिन करें कि वहाँ कितनी डैमेज हुई है उसकी रिस्टोरेशन कॉस्ट की कितना खर्चा लगेगा एनवायरनमेंट का वायलेशन हुआ है एनवायरनमेंट रूल्स का वायलेशन हुआ है एनजीटी के ऑर्डर्स का वायलेशन हुआ है मुझे बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि कुछ लोग जो एनजीटी को कंसल्ट किए या वहां गए अगर एक बार हम लोगों से बात करते हम लोगों से मिलते और पर्यावरण की सुरक्षा और पर्यावरण को बढ़ाने के लेकर आर्ट ऑफ लिविंग का जो पिछले 35 साल का जो रिकॉर्ड है इतिहास है अगर उसके बारे में वो जानते समझते तो शायद वो किसी और दरवाजे पे नहीं जाते Earlier the center had defended the event claiming it was being organized with all required permissions backing the out of living founder shri shri ravi shankar the center had also said his intentions cannot be doubted as he was committed to protecting the environment main aapko puri tarah se spasht kar rahi hu 
श्री श्री रविशंकर के कार्यक्रम को स्वीकृति देने या स्वीकृति नहीं देने में हमारे मंत्रालय का कोई रोल नहीं और ये वक्तव्य अब मेरा मंत्री के नाते नहीं है बल्कि एक समाज सेवी राजनेता के नाते है तो मुझे तो ये यकीन है कि श्री श्री वहाँ कार्यक्रम करेंगे तो गंगा यमुना थोड़ा ठीक हो जाएंगी देखिए इसको राजनीतिक कारणों से इसका विरोध नहीं होना चाहिए ये भारत की संस्कृति का उत्सव है भारत की सभ्यता का उत्सव है भारत की कल्चर एंड रिच हेरिटेज को वर्ल्ड को शोकेस करने का उत्सव है वी शुड ऑल सपोर्ट इट सरकारी बाबा है और भाजपा के बाबा है ये तो सबको मालूम है आर्ट ऑफ लिविंग वाले रविशंकर प्रसाद जी श्री श्री रविशंकर जी लेकिन स्वाभाविक रूप से सरकारी खर्च पे ये काम हो ये बहुत अफसोस की बात है हाउ आर यू वायोलेटिंग द एग्जिस्टिंग लॉस एंड डिसीजन एज फार एज एनवायरमेंट इज कंसर्न एंड हाउ आर यू मिस यूजिंग दर्मी टू फेसिलिटेट ए प्राइवेट फंक्शन organized by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar the founder of the Art of Living Foundation the festival is slated to begin on Friday the venue is spread across 1000 acres on the banks of the Yamuna it features a 7 acre stage for 35000 musicians and dancers newly built dirt tracks and 650 portable toilets environmentalists warned that the event and its 3.5 million visitors will destroy the fragile biodiversity of the area President Pranab Mukherjee on Monday decided to pull out of the 3 day event Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV Now the issue of permissions given to the Art of Living Foundation to hold an event on the banks of the Yamuna was raised in the Rajya Sabha today the opposition questioned the government over the services of the Indian army being used uh, even as the government defended the event The Art of Living Foundation's World Culture Festival found an echo in Rajya Sabha too. As soon as the house met for the day, JDU MP Sharad Yadav raised questions about the event to be held on the banks of the river Yamuna. सबसे बड़ी बात है कि एक व्यक्ति के जो कहता है कि वर्ल्ड कल्चरल फेस्टिवल कर रहा, यानी ये आदमी एक आदमी हैं और देश की फौज आपने वहां लगाई है नो 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 आपने वहां दो ब्रिज बना लिए लीडर ऑफ अपोजिशन इन द हाउस गुलाम नबी आजाद आल्सो रेज द इशू आई एम नॉट अगेंस्ट एनी कल्चरल फेस्टिवल बट द क्वेश्चन अराइजेस व्हाट अबाउट द एनवायरनमेंट बायोडाइवर्सिटी एंड इकोलॉजी इन दिस कंट्री The government however defended the event saying it was being held with the required permissions Jitne bhi us wo karyakram unke ho rahe hain wo karyakram puri tarah se anumati ke sath ho rahe hain jo bhi jo bhi jo bhi upyukt anumati chahiye Hame lagta hai ki unki niyat par shak karna hum najaiz hoga aur wo imandari ke sath paryavaran ki suraksha ke liye kaam kar rahe hain jahan tak ये पर्टिकुलर जो इशू है इसका ग्रीन ट्रिब्यूनल सुनवाई कर रहा है द गवर्नमेंट आल्सो सेड दैट द आर्ट ऑफ लिविंग फाउंडर्स इंटेंशंस कैन नॉट बी डाउटेड रविंद्र शेरांस रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी द सुप्रीम कोर्ट टुडे इशूड नोटिस टू विजय माल्या ऑन अ पिटीशन ऑफ कंसोर्शियम ऑफ बैंक सीकिंग डिस्क्लोजर ऑफ हिज एसेट्स एंड सीजर ऑफ पासपोर्ट दिस फॉलोड अ स्टेटमेंट बाय द गवर्नमेंट्स टॉप लॉयर अटॉर्नी जनरल मुकुल रोहतगी हु इंफॉर्म द कोर्ट दैट माल्या हैड ऑलरेडी लेफ्ट द कंट्री ऑन द 2nd ऑफ मार्च The Apex Court has given Malia two weeks to respond to the notice. The next hearing has been scheduled for the 30th of March. Vijay Malia left India a week ago. The Supreme Court was told by the government on Wednesday. The UB Group's former chairman is facing legal proceedings for defaulting on loans of over 9000 crore rupees from various banks. I hope that uh, ED will go one step ahead and uh, they will look into the matter. So, but At the same time the recovery proceedings also because already court has stayed, stayed everything he can't operate his bank accounts and other thing. I don't know where exactly he is but certainly the government will um, look into the matter. According to Attorney General Mukul Rohatgi, Malia left on 2nd March. The Supreme Court bench sought Malia's response within 2 weeks on petitions filed by a consortium of banks seeking direction to freeze his passport and his presence before the court. Agar kisi bhi vyakti ne chahe wo kitna hi bada ho uska status koi ho agar koi chook kari hai koi galtiyan ki hain to us par kanoon apna kaam karwai kare isme Bharat Sarkar ya Paryatan ya hamare nagrik udyan mantralay ki koi dakhlandazi nahi hogi. 
The bench said the notice to Malia could be served through his official Rajya Sabha email ID, the Indian High Commission at London, and also through the council who are representing him before various courts, debt recovery tribunal and his company. The government said Malia owes more than 9,000 crore rupees to various banks and on one or the other pretext has avoided to settle them. Agencies are doing their work. जो भी है अगर कोई अपराध है तो अपराधियों के आधार पर मतलब जो है कानून उसके आधार पर चलनी चाहिए विजय मल्लया हमारे साथ हैं पार्लियामेंट के अंदर वो मतलब जब आते हैं तो हर बार मुलाकात होती है लेकिन अब कानून अपने काम करें वी एक्सपेक्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट टू गिव एन ऑर्डर वी एक्सपेक्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट टू इम्पाउंड हिज पासपोर्ट वी एक्सपेक्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट टू सी एन इंश्योर दैट ही डज नॉट लिव इन इंडिया leave India and is forced to pay back the loan that he has defaulted. The industrialist is facing various proceedings in debt recovery tribunals in Bangalore and Goa. According to the government, Malia had assets both movable and immovable abroad that are in excess to loans secured by him here. He also said loans were granted to Kingfisher Airlines on the basis of its fleet of aircraft and brand value. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. In a Delhi court today summoned uh, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Shrival and five other Amadmi Party leaders as accused by Patiala House Court in a criminal defamation complaint filed by Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. They were asked to appear before the court on the 7th of April. The court has summoned them for their alleged offences under Sections 500, uh, Criminal Defamations and Section 34 of the IPC. Besides K. Shrival, Chief Metropolitan Magistrate Sumit Das also summoned Kumar Vishwas, Ashutosh, Sanjay Singh, Raghav Chadda and Deepak Vajpayee to appear before the court. A criminal defamation complaint was filed against K. Shrival and the Amami party leaders for allegedly defaming finance minister in the Delhi District Cricket Association controversy. I think it's an important thing because after all, the summons have been issued to all the people who had been accused in Mr. Jaitley's complaint, which is including the Chief Minister of Delhi, Mr. Arvind K. Shrival, his close associates, Mr. Sanjay Singh, Ashutosh, Raghav Chadda, Deepak Bajpai, all of them. Mr. Kejriwal and his team got a historic mandate. A mandate, hopefully, for what they promised to bring was an agenda of governance with big promises. But barring that, they seem to have focused more on making allegations, staying in the media, making allegations even where there was no substance. And when such a summon comes, I think it will give them some time to think about whether this strategy is the correct strategy. Time now to take a look at what else has been making news around the country and nationwide. Two militants have been killed in an encounter in the Pulwama district of Jammu and Kashmir, but a top lashkar e taiba commander and four other alphas managed to flee from the area. According to intelligence input, lashkar e taibas Kashmir chief Abu Dujana was among those who managed to escape from the encounter site. Dujana took, the, uh, took over operational command of the LET following the killing of Abu Qasim in October last year. Ten Naxalites, including two women, have surrendered in the insurgency hit Bijapur district of Chhattisgarh. The Kada said that they were disappointed with the ideology of the outlawed CPI Maoist. Six of the ten rebels carried a bounty of 15 lakh rupees. Two labourers died and three were severely injured when a construction site on the premises of, the, of Ames in Delhi caved in. The incident took place at around 1 in the afternoon when five labourers uh, at the site were resting. The police, fire department and other agencies were informed and a rescue operation was also launched. Teams of the National Disaster Response Force was all, were also rushed to the spot. Time for us to take a short break. That's what's more on the other side. Do stay tuned. Gyan Chopper is the ancient version of Indian snakes and ladders. This intriguing game was popular among the old, the young and the rulers as well. The chopper has its origin in the Jain philosophy. It tells the story of virtue. Each square in turn also narrates a message of wisdom.
Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. Time for some international news now. And tensions are once again high in the Korean Peninsula. A day after North Korea warned it will make a nuclear strike on the U.S. and South Korea in response to their joint military exercises. Its leader, Kim Jong-un, has now claimed that his nation has a true nuclear deterrent, nuclear warheads, that are small enough to fit on ballistic missiles. Growing conflict in the Korean Peninsula. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is claiming that his country has miniaturized nuclear warheads to be mounted on ballistic missiles. The state media published images showing the leader standing next to what it claimed was a miniaturized weapon. Only a day before, Kim called his military to prepare for preemptive attacks against the United States and South Korea and stand by to even use nuclear weapons. The developments come at a time when the United States and South Korea are conducting their largest ever joint military exercises. On Wednesday, U.S. artillery unit conducted live fire drills near the North Korean border, saying that they were war ready. If North Korea decides to use their long-range artillery, which they have so many pieces of, they would be, Seoul would be in direct range of their artillery. So our mission here is to make sure that we destroy that artillery before they can cause any more damage to the greater Seoul metropolitan area. While experts are casting doubts on North Korea's assertions over its nukes, saying the reclusive nation doesn't have the ability to launch a strike on the U.S. soil, they are also questioning the wisdom of expanding the U.S.-South Korea annual exercises. The U.N. Security Council had last week announced new sanctions against Pyongyang over its fourth nuclear test and a satellite launch, which North Korea denounced as unprecedented and gangster-like. Bureau report, Rajas of TV. Now, Bernie Sand Sanders pulled off his biggest win of the Democratic presidential race on Tuesday, defeating Hillary Clinton in the Michigan primary. The night also cemented Donald Trump's position in the battle for the Republican nomination after his wins in Mississippi, Michigan and Hawaii. Okay, I'm not going to say anybody didn't do well. They didn't do well. There's only one person did well tonight, Donald Trump, I will tell you. It's true. Donald Trump solidifying his position as the Republican presidential front-runner, winning three more states, Michigan, Mississippi and Hawaii. The wins have put him back on course. Trump also leads the polls in Florida. Ted Cruz won a Republican-only race in Idaho. Post the wins, Trump ridiculed Republicans who led attacks on him. And I don't think I've ever had... So many horrible, horrible things said about me in one week. $38 million worth of horrible lies, but that's okay. It shows you how brilliant the public is, because they knew they were lies. Meanwhile, in the Democratic race, Bernie Sanders pulled off his biggest win of the race, defeating Hillary Clinton in the Michigan primary by a margin of around three percentage points. It was a surprise victory as weeks of polling had suggested Clinton was well ahead. But Hillary Clinton increased her overall lead with a big Mississippi win. This because of the proportional system used throughout the presidential primary by Democrats. And what tonight means is that the Bernie Sanders campaign, the people's, the revolution, people's revolution that we are talking about, the political revolution that we are talking about, is strong in every part of the country and frankly we believe that our strongest areas are yet to happen. The primary and caucus elections determine the number of delegates assigned to each of the candidates. The delegates then endorse their candidate at the party conventions in the month of July. To secure their party's nomination, a candidate must win a majority of delegates. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Some international news now in Global Buzz. 673 more migrants arrived on, a pas on passenger ferries to Greece's main port of Prius on Wednesday. They said they will continue their journey to the rest of Europe, despite little hopes that the route will be opened. Government officials said on an average, 36,000 migrants are currently in Greece, with 13,000 on the border. Four police officers were injured in a shootout during a search for cannabis at a rural property in New Zealand's Bay of Plenty. According to New Zealand media, the situation is still ongoing and the police continue to surround the property where the lone shooter is still holed up.
The Chinese Foreign Ministry today said China will enhance control over items banned by the UN in response to recent reports that a China-made truck was used by, the North, Korean, uh, by North Korea in the new artillery system. Last week, the United Nations Security Council imposed harsh new sanctions on North Korea. Iran tests fired two ballistic missiles on Wednesday morning designed to be able to hit Israel, defying a new threat of uh, sanctions uh, by the United States. The launches followed the test firing of several missiles on Tuesday as part of a major military exercise that was intended to show Iran's deterrent power. Some sports now and the venue for the India-Pakistan T20 World Cup match has been moved to Kolkata from Dharamshala. The World Cricket Body, ICC, made the announcement amid security concerns raised by the Pakistan Cricket Board. The PCB had asked for a new venue for their group match with the hosts. Earlier, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif granted permission for Pakistan's cricket teams to travel to India for the T20 World Cup, but said that a final decision will be taken by the country's interior minister. A three-member Pakistan team has visited Dharamshala on Tuesday to assess security arrangements. India and Pakistan were scheduled to play their Group B match in Dharamshala on the 19th of March. A decision has been taken by the ICC to re relocate the match between India and Pakistan from Dhammasala to Calcutta. The match will take place in Calcutta, Eden Gardens, on the same date and time as the originally announced uh, match, that is the 19th of March at 7.30 p.m. Now, uh, some more sporting action in Sportsbeat. Former World Anti-Doping Agency President Dick Pound slammed Maria Sharapova as reckless beyond description after the Russian tennis star admitted to using a banned substance on Monday. The International Tennis Federation said Sharapova will be provisionally banned from the 12th of March. He faces a four-year ban for the violation. Arsenal marched into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup with a 4 0 win over second tier Hull City. Olivia Giroud and Theo Walcott were each netted twice as the Gunners kept up their bid for a hat trick of FA Cup trophies. Arsenal will now face Watford in the last eight. Cristiano Ronaldo scored his 40th goal of the season as Real Madrid reached the Champions League quarterfinals with a 4 0 aggregate victory over Roma. Leading 2-0 from the first leg, James James Rodriguez and Ronaldo scored a goal each in the second half as Madrid reached the last eight for the sixth consecutive time. Well, that's the news tonight. Good night.